My name is Rome Will. If you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, share, turn on your notifications. If you're one of my longtime subscribers, thank you for your support. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Airbnb and how to identify the best Airbnb so that you get the most bang for your buck when you're traveling. I feel like I'm qualified to speak on this issue because I am an Airbnb host myself and I have a pretty high occupancy rate uh, and I make pretty good money on Airbnb. I also spend a lot of my time in Airbnbs. I'm in one now actually in the city that you see behind me is Monteria, Colombia. Because I spend so much time at Airbnbs, I feel like I've identified some of the things that uh, separate really high quality Airbnbs from the run of the mill Airbnbs and even you know some of the bad ones. Most Airbnb owners are only in it for the money. One out of 20 Airbnb hosts are going to really offer great service and hospitality. You have to look for uh, things that will alert you to that. If the photographs are dingy, taken with a poor quality camera, the lighting's bad, the beds aren't really made, plain white walls and no artwork, no photographs, no coffee table, flimsy or cheap looking furniture. If you see things like that, no matter how cheap the Airbnb is, you should avoid that Airbnb. Not having headboards on the beds usually means that the owner hasn't taken a lot of time to furnish the apartment or didn't put a lot of effort into it. It's up to you if you want to rent that property, but uh, I would say for me, I'm, I'm very careful with those type of properties. What I look for, the headboards, are there headboards on the beds? I look for nice furnishing, couches that look like they're actually real leather couches. The furnishing looks stable in the, in the photographs or if it's made out of real wood. I look for things like that because to me, it, it suggests that possibly the owner may have even lived in the unit previously. And that's always a good thing when someone's actually lived there because that means that it's probably gonna have um, better furnishings, better kitchenware. If the walls are painted something other than just the plain old boring white, that's usually a good sign. That means that the owners put some effort into the building and the unit. If there's artwork, if there's glass vases or mirrors, things like that, that typically suggests that they put some effort into the building. A really good Airbnb host is going to also include a photo that shows the internet speed, the internet speed test. Um, a really good Airbnb host will show you what types of dishes and kitchen items that they have. If you're staying in an Airbnb in Dominican Republic or Colombia or another developing country in the Caribbean or Latin America, it's unusual to have a microwave in the unit. So if you see that there's a microwave, that's really that's a really good sign. That means that they they understand that the average American consumer is probably going to want access to a microwave. I think that it's important to read the reviews. Uh, not just the reviews that say, oh, this is a great place, five stars. A lot of times people are just being polite. And you really want to find the people who write longer reviews and they give you insight into what it's like to stay there. Is the place noisy? Is it in a good neighborhood? Are there any like hills or stairs or things that you know you, you need to know about? Don't be afraid to ask questions. Before you book, ask questions because once you book, most of the hosts don't have a very good refund policy. You're not getting the money back. So you really want to vet the host. Is there an elevator in the building? If there's no elevator, that means it's an older apartment building. It's not very modern. You're up on the fourth floor, fifth floor, sixth floor. It's going to get very tiresome having to climb stairs all the time. Backup power in the building. The generator or inverter inside the apartment so that if the power was to go off, I would still keep electricity. The router is actually in the apartment. I think that's really important for me. Everybody's gonna have a different threshold for what they want. Come up with a few questions that you that you can ask the owner. I feel like when I arrive, there should be a couple bottled waters waiting for me. There should be cooking oil, salt, pepper, sugar, coffee, uh, along with coffee filters if, if there's a coffee pot. Shampoo, conditioner, soap, dish soap, laundry detergent, mop, a broom, dustpan, a bucket for the mop, extra trash bags. You would think that these Airbnbs have this, but most don't actually. Most don't have cleaning supplies available for you. 
Um, they just, they feel like you're going to be there for a couple days and then you're going to be gone and they'll come in and clean up. But if you're staying for a week or two weeks or a month, a lot of Airbnb hosts, they won't stock things like paper towels. They won't stock a lot of toilet paper. There might be one, you know, roll of toilet paper, you know, for your stay. Even something like a plunger in the bathroom. Um, when they don't have a plunger in the bathroom, it, it suggests to me that they're not they're not very professional. They haven't thought about what could potentially happen in the unit. You'll also notice with different Airbnbs, the quality of the towels, the quality of the sheets. It's really hard to know that until you arrive. But usually if the owner put a lot of effort into decorating the place nice, a lot of these other things are going to, to be resolved. In terms of like pricing, and value, I would say that if you're paying over $800 a month, anything over $800 had better have all of these things I just discussed. Forget about swimming pools and jacuzzis and the gym inside the building. Let's not worry about that. Let's think about the fundamentals, the things that are going to be super important to you, and that's going to be your comfort. So if they have, you know, 32 inch TV in the living room and the photos, that, that probably means that, you know, that place is not worth more than about $800 a month. Um, when you're starting to pay $1,000, $1,200, even $1,400 or $1,600 for a monthly stay, I feel like you should have all of those things and more uh, because you're paying, essentially you're paying U.S. prices. To me, if I'm going to be in the Dominican Republic or Colombia, uh, my expectation is that my furnished apartment should be really nice and have the things that I need and that the host should be supported. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Uh, I know some of these things are not super obvious. Uh, if you're not paying attention, you can rent an Airbnb and end up um, in a place where you're, you're not really that happy or comfortable with it. So hopefully this video has been helpful. and. Uh, if it has been, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, turn on your notifications, um, and share this video with other people who are traveling to Colombia, Dominican Republic, Brazil, places like that. Uh, as always, I'm wishing you life, health, clarity, liberty, love, prosperity, and peace.